So a while ago, there was this big collaborative project called One Marvelous Scene, and the point of the project was for each video to take one scene from the Marvel Cinematic Universe and explain why this series of movies was so great. It was an awesome and very analytical series of videos that you can check out over at this playlist. But leading up to the end of almost a decade of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, I wanted to do something similar called Letters to Equestria, with the goal being to write a letter to some creature in the world of My Little Pony and explain how their character or episode episode showed you why friendship is magic. I even got a couple of people to participate, and for my part, I started to write a letter for Pinkie Pie, because she sings and parties and brightens up people's day. That's the character I relate to most. So I wrote the script and quickly realized that this wasn't a good letter because I was trying to avoid the episode that left such an impact that leading up to this script, I never wanted to watch the episode again. I couldn't figure out how to explain why this episode impacted me without writing a sentence and walking away from it. The reason is very personal, but it's something that I finally feel like I can talk about. Beyond that, it's been a year and I kind of want to finish this by someone's birthday. So, Dear Zephyr Breeze, When I was younger, I always had trouble measuring up. I was the youngest of five boys, and I always looked up to them for just how varied their skills were. The oldest with his strength and stern attitude, the second with his limitless knowledge, the third with his gaming skills, and Nick with his skateboarding, art, and constant outgoing nature. I shared a room with Nick, so unlike my other brothers, I had a very close relationship with him. We'd stay up late and watch Adult Swim, we'd share a computer, we'd fight, and sometimes we'd get hurt. There was one time where we were wrestling and I fell back into his dresser. The bad thing was that the handles had fallen off, so all that was there to meet my back was a screw that made a deep gash across the left side of my back. Needless to say, that left a mark. And ever since, while I can't exactly see it, I can still feel it. After that, we learned to be more careful when we played, so we'd play simpler games like pretending to sleep or this one game where you'd put your hands above the opponent's hands and their goal was to slap your hands before you had a chance to pull them away. I always lost, but it was a pretty fun game to play. We even recorded a video together showcasing some of Nick's skateboarding skills, and it was the only video I've published that features one of my brothers. Unfortunately, the channel it was originally uploaded to doesn't seem to exist anymore, so good thing I backed up all my videos. There was one time where I had gotten done playing a game of good and evil. My mom had recently gotten me a few new toys and a silly beaded necklace because of how much she knew I loved the color green. So as my mind wandered, I laid on my back and stared at the popcorn ceiling. Like the clouds, I could see things in the seemingly random patterns. A face there, a car there. It was fun to explore this canvas and see what I could find. At this point, Nick called out to me from downstairs. I knew he wanted me to do some chores around the house, so I quickly had an idea that seemed to work for him. I'd pretend to sleep. I hadn't really tried it before, but I was sure that I'd fool him. So I lied there and, to the best of my abilities, pretended to sleep. Eric? He said, standing in the doorway. I thought for sure I'd fooled him. Eric, he said again, a twinge of concern in his voice. He rushed over to me, and in that moment I was able to see something that I'd never seen before. Fear. It also might be worth mentioning that I was so terrible at pretending to sleep that my eyes were wide open and that beaded necklace from earlier looked like it had, um... Needless to say, Nick was concerned that something bad had happened to me. And he was rushing over out of fear and concern. I was so surprised by that look in his face that I broke the facade and embraced in a hug, and while it took me years to figure out why he was so concerned, it's a moment that stuck with me. Up to that point, I was plagued with the feeling that my life meant nothing, that if I ended it all, no one would miss me. But this experience proved me wrong. I have four amazing older brothers who all have their own talents and who all care about me in some way. While they don't always express it, I continue to fill a very important role in their lives, and this moment helped me realize that. It gave my life meaning, because without that, I have nothing to fall back on. I don't believe in a god or an afterlife, so if I can't find my own meaning, what is there? My answer is the people I help and meet along the way. Those cons I go to, those hours worth of singing circles, those small comments about how my viewers made friends, or how I made their day by doing something as simple as sitting down to play a game. That's what I live for. A few years later, my mom and dad grew distant. Eventually, my mom told me she was considering a divorce. I was shocked, but I didn't know what to say, how to feel, or how to react. So instead, I spent a lot of my childhood on the computer playing Minecraft or making videos. A little while after that, it was official. The result of that is that I didn't see my mom as often. 
To make matters worse, I moved out of my shared room with Nick, so we started to grow distant as well. I'd see him at hockey, but eventually he stopped showing up and even dropped out. He was squandering his potential, and everyone knew he could do so much more. So eventually, Nick got kicked out. He had friends that were willing to support him, but eventually even they kicked him out. Luckily, my mom was there for him. She gave him a place to sleep, consoled him in his time of need, and he eventually got his GED. Ironically, graduating ahead of his class, my mom later helped me get a job that was closer to her apartment, so I was able to see her and Nick more often, and things were looking up. Then one day, I was in the middle of a call, and the conversation was going well. At this point, my older brother called me in from the other room. I thought nothing of it. We'd gotten into this kind of groove where I'd come home, clean some dishes, and then relax for the rest of the night, but I hadn't gotten the dishes done yet, so all I had to do was get up, tell him I was going to do that soon, and get back to the call. But as soon as I opened the door, this mountain of a man who I could never win an arm wrestle with was struggling to find the words. I don't know if Dad told you or if you want to go over there, but my mind raced. Did something happen to Grandpa? No, he's talking about the apartment. Did something happen to Mom? Nick passed away tonight. No, just... This can't... How? He didn't have an answer, but I later found out that Nick hadn't been feeling well, and while my mom insisted that he should go to the hospital, he claimed it was just a cold. So after getting home from work after a long day, she cleaned up a bit and went over to him. And try as she might, it was too late to save him. And that gets back to you. Zephyr. Your episode came out four months after his passing, and from the second you trotted on screen, I was at the brink of tears. Because I thought I knew how this story was going to end. The disgraced family member gets kicked out and has to figure things out. And for a while, you were on that path. Fluttershy got your parents to kick you out, and after taking advantage of your sister, she kicked you out as well, and you had to live off the land. Every beat of Nick's life laid out before me like a taunting memory of how I didn't save him. But then... Fluttershy helped you again. I knew you could do it, Zephyr. I didn't! But I do now. Thanks for believing in me, sis. That's what was missing. After Nick's death, I was plagued with what-ifs, regrets, and wishes, but the simplest explanation was right there. I didn't let him know. I didn't tell him that I believed in him. I didn't tell him that I was proud of how far he's come. It's something that I tend to forget. Words have the power to inspire to lead, and to help lift people up. But a lack of those words leaves someone with nothing but their own thoughts, regrets, and insecurities. I used to see myself as nothing more than a fifth wheel, that naive kid who would never know as much or experience as much as my brothers. But now all I can think about when I go to a place of self-pity and regret is Nick's concern. My mother's concern, my father, brothers, grandpa, everyone in my life, and how they would lose something. Just like we lost Nick. And I was forced to realize all of this because of you, Zephyr. As hard as it was to have salt thrown into the wound caused by my brother's passing, you forced me to confront those feelings head on. You took a show that I watched to forget about the world and forced me to face the reality that he's gone and that I need to do better with the ones I've got. And that's something that I'll never forget. Your faithful student, Eric. <laughs>